you, you, you need to remember, guys, you were a wild olive branch, the Bible says in Romans 11, and you were engrafted into the tree because Israel's branches were broken off the natural branches. You were a wild olive branch. The Bible says to t- you need to take heed. Behold the goodness and severity of God. On those that continue in Christ, goodness. But those who don't, that go in sin, you cut off. You're severed. You're not better than, than those that were, that were the natural branches. You too will be cut off. And you probably already are because you haven't repented, because you hadn't confessed your sin. Repentance includes confession. You must confess your sin to, have, to repent. It's impossible to repent without confessing your sin. truth. It's great to be with you another day of an exciting message. I want to talk about Joseph Prince today. Now, Joseph Prince is saying some things that are really, really way out there as far as what the scriptures say. So I want to clarify those things. One thing that he says is, are your sins, your future sins forgiven? Well, let's look at the scriptures and see what it says, because that's what he says. And many other preachers say the same thing, that your future sins are forgiven. Now, this is a really, really important topic. This is the problem. This is the danger that if you're thinking that your future sins are forgiven and they're not, you're in big trouble. You will end up in hell. So I want to clarify it by the scriptures, everything that I say and everything that he says, so we can get a clear understanding because I want to help you. I don't want to see anyone go and go into eternal damnation. I want you to enjoy the Lord, to know the truth, and to speak the truth. So pay real close attention to this. Because I think you'll understand it. Does Pastor Prince believe in confessing your sins? I want to say this one, once and for all. There are people who misrepresent me out there. Louder. Pastor Prince never said, all right, you cannot, you cannot confess your sins. It's wrong to confess your sins. I'm talking about why you confess your sins. We confess our sins because we are forgiven. Remember my illustration on the ledger in my book, The Power of Post, uh, Right Believing? In that book, I mentioned what? If, a, if a, a man who is in great debt has a ledger, a debt ledger, he doesn't want to see his ledger, right? But if somebody pays off his debt, he will open up the ledger and see how much he owes with gratefulness because he knows it's all paid. Amen. And he will feel a great sense of thankfulness and gratefulness towards his benefactor. He doesn't mind looking at his faults and even telling people, confessing his sins to, his pe- to the people around him, Look at what God did. Only if you know you're forgiven. Okay, so what he's saying there, he's saying that your future sins are forgiven. And really, there's no real purpose on asking God to forgive you for your sins. He's saying the only thing, the reason you're confessing is confessing that you have been forgiven. Understand that. Does the Bible say that we're not to confess our sins that we commit in the future? Some say it's even an insult to do that. But what does the Bible say about it? What did Jesus say about it? The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter, uh, chapter 2 and verse 19, he says, while they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For a, of a whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in the bondage. He's saying you're brought into bondage if you're confessing your sin. The Bible's saying here, if you have a sin, you're in bondage to that sin. You need help. You need to confess it to the Lord and cry out, the Bible says. The scripture says in the book of James, chapter 4, this is what he says. He says in, in, in verse, verse 8, he says, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. If you sin, you are considered a sinner. Purify your heart, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. And let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. So here it's talking about a humbling of a confession of your sin. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 28, 13, it says, He that covers his sin shall not be shown mercy. But he that confesses, listen, confesses and forsakes his sin, he shall be shown mercy. So there's a confession of your sins and a forsaking of your sin. Now, the Bible says in 1 John 3, 9, now he'll, he'll, he's getting ready to tell you about this, and he'll get in there and he'll twist it and try to say you, well, here's what it says in the Greek. That's not what it says in the Greek. 
And I always put up a red flag when these people think that they can understand the, the scriptures, the translation, the King James, or whatever. They understand it better than these, these translators do. I don't believe that. I believe God's well able to protect his word. And what it says in 1 John 1, 9, it says, if we confess our sin, then he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there is a confession. He wants to put it like in the present tense, like you're forgiven already. It doesn't say that. He says, if you confess your sin, then he forgives you. You're not confessing that you've been forgiven. You're not forgiven until you confess the sin. Throughout the scripture, we hear the word repentance. What is repentance? There's godly sorrow or brokenness for your sin, and then there's a confession to be made of your sin, which is within repentance and a turning away from the sin. The scripture is clear. It does not say anywhere in the Bible that you are forgiven for your future sin. This is what the scripture really says. In Romans 3.25 Paul is quoting, this is Paul himself that he's trying to quote that tells you you're forgiven for future sins. Paul says this himself in Romans chapter 3 and in verse 25. Read it with me if you will. He says, which God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the forgiveness of sins that are past. Now why wouldn't he say forgiveness of sins for your past, present, and future? Because you're only forgiven for your sins of your past when you confess them. You don't confess sins that you, have, that you haven't even committed in the future. Hopefully, you'll never make another sin. Hopefully, you'll never do that. But if you do, you better confess it. Because you're only forgiven for sins of the past, people. The deception of the enemy is to get you to think that you don't have to repent. You don't have to turn from your sin. You don't have to confess your sin. And that Jesus' blood covers all that. No, that's not true. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Jesus, well, he was on earth. He preached constantly repentance. He says in Luke 13, 3 and 13, 5, unless you repent, you will likewise perish. So is confession necessary? Absolutely. Also in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 9, he says that he has purged you from your old sin or past sin. Nowhere, not one scripture can you find that says you're forgiven for future sin. But yet, this, that's what this man is preaching. It's a lie from the pit of hell because why? Why is this happening? The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he said, the day will come when men will not endure sound doctrine. They're not enduring sound doctrine. They're heaping to themselves teachers having itching ears. They, people want to believe that they're okay in their sin. The Bible never, ever says such a thing. You must come out of that sin. You must leave it. The Bible says in Hebrews 5, 9, that Jesus is the author of eternal salvation to all that obey him, not disobey him. The scripture is very clear. Listen to what else he says. He is faithful and just to have forgiven us our sins and to have cleansed us, both our airy stands, from all unrighteousness. Hold that right there. You heard what he said. He's changing the scripture there. He's putting it to have forgiven us for our sins. The scripture actually says, if we, verse, verse 9 of chapter 1 of 1 John, he says, if we, the Bible says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. Not that he's forgiven you your sin before you confess. He's trying to put the, the, horse, the, the cart before the horse. It's, it's, you, for, you, you ask forgiveness. You forsake the sin. He forgives you then, and he cleanses you then from all sin. It's not that you're confessing because you're already forgiven. How much godly sorrow is that? How much repentance is that? That's horrible, leading you in, in error. Go ahead. In other words, we have been forgiven. That's why we are confessing. And if we forget to confess, all right, doesn't mean that you're not forgiven. The idea that you need to confess before God forgives will put you in bondage, my friend. What is he saying? He's saying it doesn't mean that you're not forgiven if you don't confess your sin. The Bible says you're not forgiven if you don't confess your sin. How can you say that? Wow, you're going to sit there and listen to this guy? He's not even qualified to be a preacher or a pastor. 
First Peter chapter 3, verse 2 says the pastor must be blameless, a evangelist, a preacher like he's calling himself. He must be blameless. Titus chapter 1, verse 5 through 9 says he must be pure and holy. He doesn't even qualify, and he's trying to convince you that you're forgiven without confessing it. That's exactly what the devil wants you to believe so that you'll stay in your sin and you'll die in your sin and you go to hell. You must confess your sin. If you confess your sin, then he is faithful and just to forgive your sin. You must confess and you must forsake your sin. You're not forgiven without confession, without godly sorrow, without repentance and turning away from the sin. This is a lie from the pit of hell. Listen to me. I'm warning you, stay away from this kind of teaching of anybody. Him also, Joseph Prince, stay away from that. He's lying to you, and you're going to go to hell if you follow what he's saying. I'm not trying to be hard. I'm not angry. I'm passionate because I love you guys. I don't want to see this happen to you. Go ahead. And in the entire New Testament, there's only one verse that people built their whole life on, 1 John 1.9. 1, the other one is confess your faults one to another. That's a different thing. When you have a fallout with somebody, you confess your faults one to another. That's not God. That's not to receive forgiveness from God. That's to uh, release yourself from that bitterness so that healing can flow. Okay, let's, let's go look at that scripture that he's talking about there. That's found in the book of James. Let's go, let's go there and see what's, what it's really saying because he seems to be leaving out part of that scripture. That's James chapter 5 and verse 13. Let's take it what the whole scripture is saying. He says in verse 13, he says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and they let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And listen to this. And the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now he's saying, well, no, you're already forgiven for the sins. Which one is it? The Bible, the scripture says that if, you, that if he committed sin, they'll be forgiven. I thought they were already forgiven. That would be future sins. Somebody's lying. Am I going to believe what this Bible said, what the word of God says right here? Or am I going to believe Joseph Prince? Which one are you going to believe? Because the Bible says you, if you confess him, then you're, for, then you're forgiven. So they're confessing what? They're, verse 16, they're confessing their faults. You know, if you look at faults in the Greek, you want to talk, talk about looking up words in the Greek? Guess what fault says? It says it gives a definition of sins. So you know what? He's lying. He tells you only one place in the Bible that says confess your, confess your sins, and that's 1 John 1, 9. That is not true. Here's the place right here that he just quoted. But you know what? He just happened. Maybe he forgot to read the rest of the Scripture. How convenient. For the effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Go ahead. So there's no teaching when Paul talked and Paul addressed the most carnal church. Paul never one time in his spirit inspired letters and Paul wrote three fourths. He never one time said, confess your sins. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. That is, that is not the truth. He's saying that Paul never mentioned anything about ever confessing your sin. Let's go take, let's go a little, little journey and see what Paul actually did. Go with me to Acts chapter 26. In the book of Acts, Paul is speaking here, and he's talking to King Agrippa about the time that he got slain on the road to Damascus, and, and he's beginning, he's trying to share with King Agrippa to come to the Lord, and this is what Paul says. He talks about there his, his experience in verse 15, 16, and he, he goes through what, the, what Jesus came to do. He said, delivering the people from, uh, from darkness, uh, and he says, to open their eyes, verse 18, and turn them from darkness to light from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, verse 19, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly, call, heavenly vision. What was the vision? What the vision was was that the Lord had called him, had opened his eyes to see, and that he had repented to the Lord. He asked the Lord to forgive him. But he says, but he showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should what? Repent. What does repent mean? Repent includes confession of sin. So he said Paul never mentioned anything to do with confessing your sin. What is repentance? Repentance partly is, is confession and turning away from the sin. 
It's the same thing. If you turn away from sin, you're confessing it. He's not telling you the truth. He's telling you that you don't need to confess it. Paul never once said it. That's a lie. He said it right here, that they should repent and turn to God and do what? And look at this, and do works suitable for repentance. Wow, so he even adds to it, you know, you don't only ask forgiveness, but you're going to do works suitable for that repentance. You did kind of like what John the Baptist said when he did. He said, bring forth fruits of repentance, then I'll baptize you. In Matthew chapter 3 and Luke chapter 3. That's where he said it. But let's go even further. So you think that's the only Let's go back to Acts chapter 17. Here Paul says it again. Acts 17 and verse 30. And he said that in the times of this ignorance, God winked at because these people were worshiping idols and were doing things that were, that were wrong. They didn't understand who God was. God winked at those times. But now, but now, what's that? Right now. He commands all men everywhere to repent. Wait a minute. Paul saying it again? What is repentance? Confession. Turning from your sin. Turning away. So Paul, he's not telling the truth. Paul did mention it. Many, many times. These are just a few times that Paul mentioned this. Go ahead. And someone says, well, there is parental forgiveness and there is judicial forgiveness. All of us are forgiven judicially, past, present, future. But we need parental forgiveness. Hold it right there. Did you catch that? Where's that scripture? You notice there was no scripture for that? That's just what he's saying. And that is the demonic doctrine that is going to send so many people to hell. And you've got to get this, guys, before it's too late. You need to confess it. If you sinned, you best confess it and pray that God will forgive you and walk right with the Lord. Your future sins are not forgiven. Why would you even make provision for a future sin to begin with? Stop sinning. Jesus said go and sin no more. Stop the sin. Paul, who he says never mentioned forgiveness of sin, said wake up and quit sinning in 1 Corinthians 15, 34. Why won't you do what he says? Why are you looking, and these people are looking for a way out of their sin by covering it up. Bible says he that covers his sin will not prosper in, in, uh, in Proverbs 28, 13. So why would you cover it up? Why don't you just open up and say, God, you know what? I'm, I messed up. The Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 8, he says that God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself and say, yes, God, you're right. I'm wrong. You must have that godly sorrow or you can't have repentance. You can't even ask him for you. you got to have that sorrow. He's trying to teach you not to have godly sorrow for your sin. He's trying to make you feel like you don't need to feel conviction for your sin. That's the work of the Holy Spirit to do that in your life. Conviction is great. That's what God put there for you, and you are shunning it. You know what you're doing? This is what you're doing. It says it in 1 Timothy. Watch, I'll show you. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Go there with me. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. That's what you have here. You have these teachings of devils. The devil doesn't want you to make it. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. That's the danger, guys, to get your conscience seared. with well, How do you do that? You know how you do that? When you have conviction of sin and you don't pay attention to it, then as you keep doing that sin over and over again without conviction and confession, what happens? Pretty soon, the conviction's not there like it used to be because you seared your conscience with a hard iron. That's what it means. And he is teaching you how to sear your conscience with a hard iron, how to get your heart calloused. And if you're listening to this, you may already be there. You may, you may already have a reprobate mind. You don't even have conviction of sin anymore because you're not even confessing it anymore. He certainly wouldn't have it because he's not only doing it, but he's trying to get other people to do it. That is the work of Satan. Go ahead. How about this, my little children? Is that parental? I write to you because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. And the forgiven there is perfect tense. You can check it out. Once and for all. What sins are forgiven? What is he talking about? Read the scripture in context. He's talking about your past sins forgiven. 
not your future sins. He's trying to make it play into that your future. They say, my little children, I write it you that you that, that your sins are forgiven. What is he talking about? He's not talking about future sins. These kind of people don't even have future sins. What sin is he talking about? They haven't sinned in the future. He's talking about their past sins are forgiven. But he's twisting this, guys. Pay attention. Now, it's possible because you're sin conscious, you avoid, like, like you owe money from someone and you're, you're not able to pay the person. You avoid the person. Now, the person has nothing in his heart but love for you. The person is willing to extend uh, uh, you know, the, the, the stay of your debt. But, but you do not know it. You, you, when, you, when you see the person, you avoid the person. You see the person in, in a mall, you go into the toilet. You know, why? And there's nothing wrong with the person's part. In fact, the person decided already last night to forgive you of all your debt that you owe him. But the debt is on your conscience. So many times, now, if you want to confess your sins, all right, go ahead. No problem. But don't think that's, that's when you are forgiven. That's the problem I have. Because once you believe that, then the devil will say, before you pray for the sick, before you do anything, they will say, are you sure you've confessed all your sins? Okay, what is he saying? He's saying a person owes somebody a debt so he avoids go- facing him. Isn't he telling you to do the same thing? If you sin, the wages of sin is debt. It's death. You have a debt, and you have death on you. So what are you going to do? He's saying you're going to go run to the, to the restroom. I'm not even going to say what he said. But he said you're going to go run to the restroom to avoid them. No. What does God say to do? Come to me and confess it so that you can get forgiven of your debt. He's acting like, well, no, you already forgiven in advance, so why would you even go run from the guy if you're forgiven in advance? But no, you need to confess that sin. And then Christ is faithful and just to forgive you and turn away from that sin. Go ahead. Or he'll remind you at that, mo- that precise moment, that opportune moment, he'll remind you of something you just did that you forgot, and he'll bring it to your mind straight away to keep you sin conscious until you confess. So what am I saying? Under the present truth, you confess because you are forgiven. Yes. Hold it. Under right the there. old truth. Two things there that, that he's, he's going on with is he's saying that you don't need to confess uh, because you've, you're forgiven. All, you conf- all you're confessing is that you are forgiven. That's not what the scripture says. The scripture says to confess so you can be forgiven. He's talking about these people back in the 1800s. He said preachers used to preach. He said they were preaching law because they actually said that when you sin, you need to confess your sin. That's the old law. That is not the old law. That is not, it's been been the law forever. It's been the way God has it. God didn't change there. He never came back and says, listen, you don't need to confess your sins anymore. But that's what he's getting because that's when, he, when you preach into some teaching people that their future sins are forgiven, which is a lie, and it's not based in the Scripture. That's what you're telling people. Jesus told people to confess their sins. Jesus told them to go and sin no more. Jesus told them to be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. But he's telling them you don't need to do that, that you can keep being your sin. You can go out, try that with your wife maybe, or, or, or husband, try, try that with your with, with, or wives, try that with your husband. What if your wife tells you, listen, I can go out and commit adultery. It's already been forgiven. So, honey, you just need to forgive me just like God because he's already forgiven me for my future sins. So I don't even have to confess that I've committed adultery. Think about what he's saying, guys. I can go out and rob a bank. I don't need to confess that I robbed the bank. I'm already forgiven. I can deny the Lord and say I don't even know him and curse him, and I can be forgiven. I can take the mark of the beast. I'm already forgiven. I can curse like a dog. I'm already forgiven. That's what he's saying. You can look at porn till you're blue in the face, but I don't need to confess it. I can just say, thank you, God. I confess it. I'm looking at porn, but I know I'm forgiven. How ridiculous and abominable that is. He even comes to the place where he says that it's the devil who makes you feel, makes you feel bad for your sin. That's not the devil. That's your conscience. That's the Holy Spirit dealing with you. And he's telling you that's the devil doing it. He completely reversed it. You need to listen to God. You know what? The scripture says this. My sheep, chapter 10 of of John. My sheep hear my voice. Hear my voice. And a stranger's voice they will not follow. 
Why you listen to the stranger's voice? You know what the stranger's voice tells you? You don't need to confess your sin. Stranger's voice tells you you can, you can do porn, you can commit adultery, you can steal, you can kill, you can do all these things, be a homosexual, be whatever you want to be. It's already forgiven. You don't have to confess it. That is a lie of the devil. The devil told Eve the same thing. You don't need to confess that sin. You can go eat that fruit, and you're just going to make you wise. You will not die. You will die. My Bible says the wages of sin is death. If you're sinning, I don't care what you, how many times you've been at an altar, how many, how, many, how many times you said that you said you think you were saved, you are, you are going to end up in hell. I promise you that. I, I'm telling you that. Why can I promise you? Because that's what the Word of God says. Jesus said this in John 8, 21. If you die in your sin without confessing it, you are going to hell. You can also find that in Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 20 and 21. You're not going to make it. You need to listen up. This is the word of God. This is what you're going to be judged by. Jesus said in John chapter 12, the words that I speak to you, they will judge you in the last day. Go ahead, Sid. You confess, you confess to be forgiven. That is a valid truth. And under the law, they, conf they confess their sins to be forgiven. Hold up. Man, every you hear what he's saying? Did you hear that? He said, under the law, you confess to be forgiven. Under the law? You, you know what? These people don't want to say you're not, you're not under the law. You're not under the Mosaic law. And that's what it's really talking about in Galatians and Romans. It's talking about the Mosaic law that you're not under. What does the Mosaic law consist of? With 661, 660 commandments. But mainly what it's talking about is the law of circumcision, the law of the keeping of special feast days, all these different holy days, the laws of Sabbath, these are the, what's called the law. You say, well, how do you know that? Because in Galatians, what Paul wrote all about that, Galatians 3, Galatians 4, he came back in Galatians chapter 5, and this is what he said. This is Paul who he says you don't need to confess your sin. He says this, he says, if you walk in the flesh, you will die. But if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. This is Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. And he names them. He says adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, um, murder, um, even in um, Revelation 21, uh, lies, liars, uh, all these different, different sins. And he says, in such light shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Well, Paul, that sounds like law. Well, why would he say you won't inherit the kingdom of God if you do those things? Oh, well. Well, Joseph Prince says, I don't even need to confess him. You know why? Because he wants you to go to hell. Because that's what the scripture says. If you do those and you don't confess him and get right with your heart with the Lord, you're going to hell. That's what the scripture says. That's what the word of God says. And that's what you need to take heed to. But the scripture says in, in, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul is writing, says to them that are without law, to be as without law, Paul was said to be, but not without law to God, but he said we're under the law to Christ. You're under the law of Christ. What was the law of Christ? You remember what, what, I'll give you one of them. I can give you several if you want. But in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said this. He said, it's been said that do not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whoever looks upon a woman to lust after her, He's already committed, and it's already, has already committed adultery. The Bible says an eye for an eye, but I, and a two for two, but I say love your enemies. Do good to those who do these things to you. Turn them one, they hit you one cheek, turn them another cheek. That was the law of Christ. It surpassed the law of the Ten Commandments. And that's what you are to do. But this man is trying to convince you and, and has convinced many of you that you don't need to pay attention to the words of Jesus Christ. My Bible tells me in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 4, he said, the, the word of God says, this is Paul speaking again. He says, he says, if any man speak otherwise and does not consent to the wholesome words of our Lord Jesus Christ, even the teaching which is of godliness, he is proud knowing nothing. Joseph Prince doesn't know anything. That's what my Bible says. And you're sitting under this guy, and the Bible tells you directly he's not qualified as a preacher or a teacher or a pastor, and he doesn't know anything. 
He's lying to you. He's listening to the devil. He's not listening to the voice of the Lord. He's listening to a stranger's voice, John 10 says. Like I said a little while ago, my sheep hear my voice. A stranger voice, they will not follow. He's following that. Why? What does the stranger's voice do? It tells you, you know what? You can sin, and you don't need to confess it. That's the stranger's voice. Don't worry about that sin. You're okay. You can sin and you won't die. He's been saying that for 6,000 years. But if you're listening to Jesus' voice, is he going to tell you not to confess your sin? He's not even going to tell you to, to sin. If you listen to his voice, you won't even sin. So whose voice are you listening to? Are you really a sheep? Are you really a sheep? Because he said, my sheep hear my voice. What are you? Joseph Prince, what are you, Joseph Prince? Are you a sheep? Because you're certainly not listening to his voice from what I'm hearing coming out of your mouth. And you know what comes out of your mouth? is in your heart. That's what Mark chapter 7 says. He said all sin proceeds out of the heart and comes out in your life and in your mouth. He says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks this ugliness. But he's trying to make you feel justified in your sin. When James 2.24 says, that that you are justified by your, by works and not by faith alone. It's by what you are doing. Are you confessing your sin? Are you living a holy life? These are the questions that really need to be asked. Some they confess they must bring a goat or a sheep. Today, we don't bring goat and sheep. So, at one time, under law, the damn truth is that you forgive in order to be forgiven. Now, under the present truth, you forgive because you are forgiven. Amen. Go to Matthew chapter 6. Go to Matthew chapter 6. Let's see what Jesus said. I want to see which one you're going to believe, okay? Tell me which one you believe here. This is what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6. Here it is. Jesus speaking, verse 14. For if you forgive men their, trans their sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their sins, neither will your Father forgive you your sins. He says you don't need to forgive other people's sins because you're forgiven. He's saying that's, that's not necessary in your life. So who are you going to believe, Jesus or Joseph Prince? Sounds like a lot of you are believing Joseph Prince because my Bible tells me, and Jesus is speaking, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I know what you're going to say next, some of you. Oh, that's old covenant. Really? Let me tell you what Jesus said, okay, if you don't know it by now. Matthew 28, 18 says, Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. And he commands his disciples, this is, and when he's saying this, this is after his death, the crucifixion, after he was risen from the dead, which brings in the new covenant. This is new covenant teaching, Jesus is saying. And he says this, go and preach this gospel to every nation, both Jew and Gentile. And he says, teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. Everything. So when Jesus said this here in Matthew chapter 6, when he said, if you forgive men their trespasses, their sins, your heavenly Father will forgive you. That's new covenant. Because he brought it into the new covenant. When he said, if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses, that's new covenant because he brought it in a new covenant. See, he's lying to you. It's a trick of the devil. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Hear his voice, he said. Jesus even said in Luke 6, 46, he says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? Why don't you do what he said? But you're listening to somebody else trying to void out the, the, the words of Jesus and telling you don't do that. All right, Ephesians and Colossians tells us that. Under the law, you confess to be forgiven. All right, it's not possible even then to confess all your sins. But under grace, just like it's not possible to keep, keep the commandments in their hearts, it's only outward. But under grace, you confess because you are forgiven. And if that is not enough, just let you know the word, if we confess our sins, it's homo logio. Let me tell you something. Let me show you what the Bible says about people that say just what he just said. I want you to go to the book of Jude. In the book of Jude, chapter 1, I want to read something to you. 
He's writing to the saints, those that are sanctified. And he says in verse 3, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me, th- for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unaware, this is Joseph Prince, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men, he'll, he'll say he don't live, he's not living godly because he's not even confessing his sins. He's, it's, he's in sin. His sin has not been forgiven. He's never confessed them. He doesn't do that. Who were before ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into a license to sin and denying the only God and Lord Jesus Christ. He's telling you this grace gives you the right to be able to sin, isn't he? Think about it. He's telling you can sin, you can sin, he don't have to confess it. He's telling you you're already forgiven. He's saying it's because of the grace. No, you know what the grace of God does? Turn with me to Titus chapter 2. This is what the grace of God does for you. Grace of God is not a license to sin. It doesn't give you that liberty to go in sin. Titus chapter 2 clears it up. He says this. He says, verse 11, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. When? Right now. It's teaching you to quit sinning. It's teaching you to get sin out of your life. But he's teaching you don't even confess your sin. Like your sin's okay. Everybody's doing it. It's good. It doesn't matter. Baloney. What you're doing is crucifying Christ afresh over and over again. His sacrifice is, is nothing to you. My Bible tells me that if, if we sin willfully, there's no more sacrifice for you sin. You're sinning willfully and thinking it's just fine for what he's telling you. Totally against the word of God. Again, I've got to repeat this again. Listen carefully. It's taken from Hebrews 5, 9. Listen to it. Jesus Christ is the author of eternal salvation to who? To who? To all that obey him. Not those that disobey him like what he's talking about. You must walk in obedience. If you sin, you must confess it and forsake the sin. Go ahead, go ahead. Go for the Homo logos. Now let's say the same thing with God. Number one, what did God say about your sin? It is a sin. Amen? Number two, what did God do with your sin? He forgave it. So if you're truly confessing your sins the Bible way, you must confess in such a way, Father, I did that just now. I thank you that you have forgiven me. You that know, you know is- what? Hold that. You know what? How much godly sorrow is in that? How much godly sorrow is in that where you, you sin and you say, Father, I thank you for that you've already forgiven me? That's, that's an insult to God. Instead of being broken and lament and cry and break, in a godly sorrow, you're instead, instead of that, you're boasting in the Lord. You boasted and you're getting broken off that bra- off the tree. You, you, you need to remember, guys, you were a wild olive branch, the Bible says in Romans 11, and you were engrafted into the tree because Israel's branches were broken off the natural branches. You were a wild olive branch. The Bible says to t- you need to take heed. Behold the goodness and severity of God. On those that continue in Christ, goodness. But those who don't, that go in sin, you cut off. You're severed. You're not better than, than those that were, that were the natural branches. You too will be cut off. And you probably already are because you haven't repented, because you hadn't confessed your sin. Repentance includes confession. You must confess your sin to, have, to repent. It's impossible to repent without confessing your sin. So that's what I do. When I sin, all right, and I realize it's a sin, I just thank God that I have been forgiven of that sin. Oh, my. Uh, This idea that, oh, you produce licentiousness and all that. No, I tell you what. Being sin conscious will produce licentiousness. Amen? Are you learning? My heart is broken because of what I hear coming out of his mouth. This man wants to say that you have Christ's righteousness. My Bible says, 1 John 3, verse 7 and 8. It says, only the one, don't be deceived. And this is what this man is doing, is he's deceiving you. And the Bible says, don't be deceived. That's a warning. 
And he said, only, it says, only the one who does righteousness is righteous. He does it as Christ is righteous. The one that's not doing righteous, righteousness is not righteous. You're not righteous if you're not doing it. If you're sinning like he's saying, and you're just like, it's no big deal, and say, oh, thank you, Lord. I thank you that I have, have my forgiveness. You didn't even confess your sin. You didn't even repent of your sin. You're still doing it over and over again. How can I get through to you? How can I say the words? My heart, I love you guys. I don't want to see you there. you got to stop listening to these people. You have to go back to the Word of God. Listen to what the Word of God says. Jesus said, without repentance, you will perish. He's saying you don't need to repent. If you Look at verse, verse 8 of that same chapter, 1 John 3, 7, verse 8 says, if you sin, you're of the devil. You can't be of the devil and of God. You cannot, First Peter, First Timothy chapter 5 says, you can't drink the cup of the devil and the cup of the Lord. Some of you are trying to drink both, and you're not drinking the cup of the Lord. Believe me. Let me tell you what happens when you sin. This is what happens. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 says, the hand of the Lord is not short that it cannot save. Neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your sin, what does it do? Has separated you from God. You're not even connected to God anymore. You're separated from Him. Don't believe these preachers that are saying this. You are separated because of your sin. And he says, and your sin hath hid his face from you. He's turned his face away. You're trying to pray. He turns his face. He's not here. And he said he does not hear your prayer. He wants to hear one prayer from you, and that is a confession of your sin and a repentance. And you won't even give him that. Because that's what he's telling you, don't do it. My, my. If you're sitting, you're in a bad shape. The wages of sin is death. Paul said, don't be deceived. Know you not that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. He says, you will not. John said it in Revelation 21, 8. He says that, that all those that are fearful, unbelieving, liars, fornicators, adulterers, all these, he says, will have their part in the lake of fire. There's no addendum there that it says, well, if you once were right, then you're okay to go in. You know what Jesus said at the end of the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, the last chapter? After Paul spoke, after everybody's done, done speaking of all the different disciples that wrote all the books of the Bible, he comes back and he, come, and he comes back with a conclusion. You, be, you best pay attention to what he said because you won't get in if you don't. This is the most important thing you could hear tonight. He said this. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. This is the one that had all authority on, and pow, on power on earth. And he says this to you. He said, he that does not keep my commandments will not have the right to enter into the gates, into the city. He won't be able to get in. You're not keeping his commandments. You're not even confessing when you break them. You will not get in those gates. Don't fool yourself. Jesus told you it's a narrow way. What are they trying to do? They're trying to take that narrow way and broaden it. And Bible says the broad way is the way that leads to hell. But straight narrows the way that leads to heaven. And few there be that find it. Will you be one of those few? Or are you going to go with these? And right, right past that, Jesus says this. He says, beware. Let me put up a big beware sign here. Beware. Beware. I'm telling you this big time. Listen to me. Beware of Joseph Prince. Why? Because he is a false prophet. He says, beware of false prophets. For they come to you in sheep's clothing. They sound good. They look good. They look the part. But inwardly, you know what he is? A ravening wolf. Why? How do you know that? Because he tells you the next verse. How do I know, Lord? He says, by their fruit you know. What's the fruit, Lord? A good tree does not bring forth evil fruit. It brings, it, it, it can't. Because a corrupt tree is what brings forth evil fruit. That's a corrupt tree. It's bringing forth sin. And it's covering over sin. And it's not going to stand on day of judgment. Go back to the Word of God. Scripture says, Cursed is man who trusts in man. In Jeremiah 17, Do not trust this man. Do not trust me. Trust God and His Word. That's the truth. This Word. Go back in the Bible. Look at it for yourself. This is too important. 
to just go sit in a church once a week with this guy or turn him on and listen to that and lose your soul. You say, well, i got to make all this money. i got to do all this. What does it gain? If a man gained a whole world, what does it profit him? And he loses his own soul. This is the most important thing. Come to the Lord. You say, how? Go back to your first love. Go back and break before God and, say, and confess your sin. Do it the way God said to do it. Confess it, forsake it. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 7, 10, and 11, it says that godly sorrow leads to repentance, a brokenness. I hope you're broken. I hope you're convicted after today what I've shared with you. And I hope you're breaking right now. And you tear. I hope tears are coming down your eyes. May the Holy Spirit have its way right now. And you, you, what, how blessed you are if that's happening. And you know what you do? You need to go kneel down right now. And you need to confess your sin. Say, Lord, I sinned and I didn't confess it. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'll never do it again. I'll never sin again. Confess that to him. Once you confess it in that broken, godly sorrow, then repent. And that means turn from it. Say, Lord, that's over with. I'll never go back to that. Go make restitution for what you've done to others. Do whatever it takes. And then you receive salvation. That's what I want for you. And he says you receive salvation not to be repented of. You say, what does that mean? That means don't go back to sin again. Cry out to God. This is the assurance I have in, in Isaiah 66, 2. It says this. If you'll humble yourself of a broken, a poor, and contrite spirit, and call out to God and tremble at his word, he will not cast you out. Do that. Please, may God bless you. We'll see you soon. And most of all, I hope this helped you. I'm praying that it does. I'll see you next time.